I got a two. Um, Father Chris, what happened last time? All right. <clears throat> last time. Last time. <laughs> Let me pull it's up. It's like three weeks ago. See if that'll jog my memory here. It was the Dune arc. Little Avatar, little Dune, and a little Waterworld, maybe? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. We were hanging out with, um, we split the party. And, um, uh, are we still split? <laughs> you are still split. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll hop in with an important question I have. Uh, Doc Ocean. Uh, so here's the split I have. I have that Books, um, Lothak, and Chapman are together. And then I have Doc Ocean, Shipley, Bellamy, and um, uh, uh, goodness, uh, what's her name? Isabella? Yeah, Isabella. I didn't have her name written down. It's so weird. Let me fix that right. And Isabella are together. Is that is that correct? Uh, you guys are on the. You guys are pretending to be pharmaceutical buyers, and uh, the other group is like pretending to um, be investigators on behalf of a non-government organization. And you've like met up with like the locals. Do I have the divide correct? He was because he he saved the uh, the guy who got beat up. Remember? Okay, yeah, Doc yeah, Ocean. Yeah. yeah, had to have been with books and Chapman and Lothak. That's right, because you saved the guy. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so here's what's going on. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it and then we'll roll. Um, By all so, means. No, yeah. So um, I think that's about about it. But let's back up um, and kind of kind of go back to the beginning of the campaign, which, by the way, is approaching nine months ago when it started. But we spent like three months almost on Walston uh, and doing stuff with that. But um, way back six months ago now, toward the beginning of the campaign, um, you, uh, well, all except Books and Chapman, uh, you guys were in a different crew, and Doc Ocean wasn't with us. But Bellamy and Shipley, uh, you all uh, took a job from a man on a, a water world named Squalia, named Vanpar Landleth the owner of uh, Landleth Prospecting Company. And um, there are other planets and asteroid belts in, um, uh, in the Squalia solar system. And he wanted you to infiltrate a poorly secured secret facility held by McClellan. They were depending on secrecy, and he had cracked that secrecy. And you did this kind of a uh, cold running approach and you uh, floated in and Marcello was with you. So he hacked into the computer systems and got you into the facility and you extracted the, um, uh, the, this at, at the time you didn't know what it was. It was a, a, a like a, a hard case uh, or a flight case or something. And you get it on your ship and the uh, electricity starts to flicker and go off and the power shuts down. And then when it comes back on, you find that you've lost partial control of your systems. And there is a woman's voice that uh, says, I want you to take me back there because I want to kill them. And you all said, well, we are taking you to someone who wants to hurt them. Maybe would you like to work with him? And she found that acceptable. You considered just keeping her, uh, but you took her back to Van Par Landleth. All for the promise of a job. So here it is, the very end of the, uh, the you know, nine, nine months later now, six months uh, toward the end, you come back to Squalia. 
and the sector is about to go to war. And um, McClellan intervenes. And the guy that got Books and Chapman out of jail, Rakamundra, offers you 175,000 credits if you stab Vampire Lanleth in the back. Meanwhile, Lanleth is offering you 100,000 credits. And the Imperial agent, Yukon, has told you that this AI is going to be used for something really terrible. Um, and so the AI hangs in the balance amidst all of this. So here you are, and you've split the party. And uh, the goal here, uh, both Rakamundra, on behalf of McClellan Industries, and Van Parlanleth, with the um, pan-galactic friends of life, both of them are trying to find if there was any wrongdoing. And um, Captain Bellamy, and Shipley, and um, uh, you and Isabella, you all are on the factory ship um, under the guise of... Uh, name of the company. Kelstar Limited Liability Corporation. Kelstar. And you have uh, s uh, uh, fake names and identities, and you're all spruced up. Um, and you're acting as buyers. And at first, they seemed like they were going to give you a, uh, a sample of this super drug that they're getting out of these giant, like, city-sized whales called uh, PDPT Beta. And, um, and then... And here you are on the ship. Now, we ended the session with them telling you that, in fact, they didn't have any. But I kind of skipped ahead because I knew that we would have, like, three weeks would be gone. So... You've made it on board the ship. You're in your cabin. And um, I think Bellamy went out at night. And you witnessed something like get like shot down. Like um, with the weapon system. And Bellamy asks about the weapon systems on board the ship. So you have some time before they uh, negotiate this deal with you. Uh, with Anna Gregor who is the uh, operations officer for this company, uh, Sea Harvester. Meanwhile, uh, Doc Ocean and Books and Chapman, um, you all rescued the princess of, uh, of this tribe, a tribe called the, uh, the Armakalar, the Seekers, the, wor the Seekers of the World Soul. Um, the non-natives call them the, the ocean nomads. And uh, they hunt the Dagadasi. And um, a hunt went badly. And then a bunch of dead people were brought in from a, world sh a uh, factory ship attack from Sea Harvester. And uh, let's start with uh, Bellamy and Shipley, and Isabella. Can I request, I'm sorry, but can I request that you start with the other crew? Because, other oh, group, because... Yeah, no problem. The dog is, is... Anyway, her timing well, is uncanny. No, it's okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So... Um, books and uh, Doc Ocean. Just a reminder, there's this huge ship that is basically like a floating city. Um, part of it's submerged. It has this like, uh, what do you call the types of ships that have the, the two things? Tri trireme? Is that what it's called? I can't remember. Um, uh, and, and anyways, part of the, sh the ship is like submerged. And then you've got the part up above it, and uh, it has like this big kind of hangar bay part in the center, and inside is a whole city, uh, and it looks like a um, a Mediterranean market, and with vibrant colors and smells and spices and foods and all kinds of stuff, and uh, they just recently brought in 
like all these dead people from where um, uh, it, and it's nighttime okay and um, you see them getting brought in and people are wailing they're mourning and um, um, Salil Kafid uh, the princess uh, the uh, the daughter of the um, of the the leader of the uh, Armakalar uh, the Oromiral she uh, she comes up to you and of course she ignores if I recall correctly ignores books and um, turns to Doc Ocean and says the um, the Hukarmat Bas Baslika um, is deciding what we will do about this attack from the uh, from the outsiders and they are deciding what to do about you oh I'm sorry I have you muted fix that sorry if you were talking Thomas I, I, I apologize it's okay um, I asked uh I'm a doctor. Is there anybody that needs medical attention that I can assist with? Yeah, she like takes you and motions you toward them, and uh, it's a carnal mess. And uh, your your skills are desperately needed. In fact, um, uh, you could probably save um, two dozen lives uh, if you you think if you get to work. There are common things like um, collapsed lungs punctured uh, punctured airways um, uh, bleeding um, the possibility of infection um, you think that you get the impression that even though there's they have this like st uh, reliable and ancient technology uh, they can they can literally harvest the metal from these fish like their their iron content and repair their ship and all kinds of stuff and they have fusion power uh, that it's sort of expected that you are prepared to die when you go out into a hunter foil. So um, um, they have medical care, but I mean nothing like a imperial trained doctor like yourself. Yeah, I round up the medicine people or the shaman or whoever is assisting with the medical uh, the injured people and I start handing out directions and saying okay you need to go over here and do this and you need to go over here and do that and I'm like triaging as best as I can and working my way from the worst to the least injured okay you do that and you um, by working through the night you're, you're you probably save 24 different people um, so while you're doing that uh, books what, uh, what are you doing you see uh, books, all this chaos, and you see Doc Ocean like rush into action. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, the um, all the people here seem like they're ignoring you. But um, Salil K Kalfid uh, turns back to um, uh, to Chapman and basically says that um, uh, if you want a voice on the council. Um, or in our affairs, you may earn it on a hunt. And Salil says that to Chapman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's ignoring you. She's all the people, all the people here ignore you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I made a great impression last time. Um, I think that I would like to do something. Um, maybe I assist Doc Ocean a little bit just to try to gain some favor. But I'm also listening to Salil's conversation with Chapman because that, uh, you know, piques my interest. See what kind of hunt hunt this is referring to. Um, so I'm kind of eavesdropping, but trying to assist at the same time. Um, so uh, after, yeah, you listen and um, Chapman. Um, eventually, uh, she returns to her duties, um, Kafid does, and, um, 
Chapman turns to you and she and he says, uh, "So there's this Muharib Sayasinde, uh, which is a Dugadasi hunt, uh, and they hunt the smaller ones." Um, and she says that we have a right to uh, to participate. They uh, they they never require if if we choose to become um, uh, Gimme Salar, one of the sailors. Okay, so you'd have to become one of the sailors to join the hunt. The opposite. If you join the hunt, you get a voice. Okay, if you join the hunt, you get a voice. Um, and we're welcome to join. Like we're both welcome to join the hunt. Apparently, um, they're offering a single uh, hunter foil for us. I mean, I'm curious to see what this entails. So I would, uh, I'd be, I'd be uh, interested in taking that role. All right. Um, so Doc Ocean uh, is working on all these uh, these mangled people, you know, through the night um, and. Um, uh, really turning things around there. Um, you, you, you know, talk to, uh, to Chapman and to Lothak. Um, and you have this marketplace. They, she brought you to this, like, uh, little alcove, uh, where you kind of have uh, a bunch of pillows and cushions and stuff. And this kind of cozy nook that you can, you can, that they've offered for you to stay in. Um, and they've also said that if you don't take part, or either way, um, you know, there's, there's this meeting called a Hukumat Basilica, that where they're going to meet and they're going to decide what to do with the attack from the outsiders, and uh, they're going to decide your fate. The hunt is going to occur before that. Um, is there anything else you want to do during the night uh, while uh, Doc Ocean is doing his work? I would say um, just assist. Um, if I could help out Doc Ocean at all, I would do that. Otherwise, I would keep my head low until the hunt. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not liked here. Uh, so, um, Doc Ocean, you, you finish early into the morning. It's probably three local time, something. And um, covered in blood, you know, and everything. But um, um, you have employed your trade, saved two dozen lives. Um, and, uh, yeah, you rejoin um, Chapman and Books and uh, Lothak. All right. Uh, uh, Books, I am thoroughly exhausted. I'm going to catch some shut eye. Did, uh, did I hear something about us joining a hunt later? You did. You did. And uh, good work today. You saved a lot of lives. Uh, yes, there is the chance for us to... Um, know to get a voice with uh with this whole thing by joining the hunt and then there's also a uh there's going to be a meeting after that to discuss some things so yeah you you heard right oh okay i'm uh i'm gonna catch some z's and wake me up when it's time to go on the hunt all right yeah you got it you got it buddy get some rest i, I instantly knock out i pass out <laughs> on one of the cushions all right Cool. So um, that is your all's night. Meanwhile, uh, in the evening, over on the factory ship, Globe Tick Um yes. yes, sir. Um. So what? We've been f shut out. Um. No, no, not yet. Uh, just I'm sorry. I skipped ahead last session, but uh, you were invited onto the ship. You had this meeting with Anna Gregor. She seemed pretty enthusiastic and kind of hinted at the idea that maybe she could get you some extra PBT a beta, that drug, um, and um, saw you to your cabins. Uh, you heard that gunfire. You came out and you checked that uh, at night, uh, and um, they told you to return to your cabin. Uh, so it's the, it is nighttime on the ship on the Globe Tick Solami. Is there anything that you want to do? Uh, 
I'm hesitant to say, I, I, now that I, I mean, <laughs> did we get a premonition? We basically got a preview that they're not going to like us in the morning. Um, yeah, you got a preview. I'm sorry, your characters would not know that, but uh, basically yeah. Anna Gregor uh, said she would not actually have any to sell you. But either well, way, I mean... Okay, though, because we, we have uh, our little cameras recording her doing a lot of incriminating things, as I recall. Oh, and saying things, and <laughs> yes, I mean, yeah. there's all sorts of stuff we've got recorded, but it'd be nice to seal the deal. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's got to be some place. I mean, look, hey, if they're not going to like us in the morning, we might as well give them a reason. <laughs> 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 there's got to be something we can do blundering around and find out, you know, just and then, you know, some some sort of Bellamy style trouble we're all sort of Damocles is hanging over us. And so I'm, Isabella I'm just, uh, is like, why, why do you, why do you think she wouldn't like us? Uh, it seemed like, it seemed like uh, it went really yeah. well. Well, no, I, I, I guess what I mean is we need to, uh, we don't have a track record for things going well. Um, I we should like try to find, to do, uh, yeah, we need to, we need to be proactive. Yeah. We should maybe try to get down to the storage container and see if we can, like, see if their storage exceeds the allotted amount. Okay, yeah, and I'm I'm gonna see if if I can put on some spooky music. Then I suppose we should just stay together. Something. It's too um... late. We've already split the party. <laughs> well, yes, but at least the two of us could stay together. All right, so you're going to try to uh, leave your cabin. Um, do you have your weapons with you? You don't have your armor because you're all nice, you know. Uh, do you have, like, a holdout pistol or a knife or a pistol revolver or something like that? No, because this world is high security, and they tell you to leave yeah. all that on the ship. That's right. Uh, I'm sorry, someone brought that up last time. Maybe it was Books or Doc Ocean, one of the two. You guys brought it up, and yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, you uh, you sneak out of your cabin at night, and um, it seems like they're not suspecting a security threat from inside because you see the typical one or two guards per major intersection and a regular kind of ship's fire guard that's patrolling uh, two at a time on the deck. And um, you think that you can make your way to the cargo hold, uh, even though you haven't seen it, with some certainty by taking um, this part of the ship, the kind of bridge is in this uh, vertical stack, and um, it just has like elevators and uh, 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 switchback stairs and it goes to the cabin cruise quarters and it goes to the bridge and stuff like that. You think if you just take it down, you should be able to make it down into the belly of the ship. Right on. Okay. You um, start to head down the stairs. The first thing you notice is at the first major intersection where this, uh, this kind of vertical stack of stairs if you're taking the stairs assume because it's quieter um where it meets the main deck of the ship there are two guards uh, they are facing away from the stairwell and they are talking to each other about uh the latest uh what is it called air car model that they're interested in The, the new two, the new tweet, uh, T eighteens. <laughs> um, they're armed. You say they have are, are there... Yeah, they all have uh, blue uniform, uh, tactical gear, armor, and submachine guns. And um, yeah. Um. I'm sorry, what else do we see in the environment? Uh, like, sure. What, what... Let me scribble. Okay. So, uh, let's see here. Like a blue scribble. So, like, um, you got like this vertical section of ship. It meets the main deck. 
uh, and it kind of like switches back or maybe uh, off the top of my head, I think you were like on the third floor or something. I can't remember exactly. I can look it up if it matters, but um, you don't encounter anything along the hallways. Um, but once you get uh, to here, that's when you'll, you'll see uh, two guards. Um, and uh, this continues on, you know, down below them. So you get the main deck of the ship, um, and then you've got um, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the, the bowels of the ship. I can't remember what it's called. Low deck. And, um, yeah, um, you've got definitely the, uh, the bridge and officer's quarters uh, somewhere in this building. Um, but from where you are, you just see, like, a stairwell. That's where you're currently at. Just a Spartan, plain old, simple stairwell. It would uh, look like a, a well, hmm, what would you compare it to? The kind of simple, the, the kind of stairwells you'd see in an emergency, uh, uh, the, uh, a staircase or a stairwell in any kind of imperial facility. Uh, there's some emergency equipment on the wall. There are no side doors. At least not where you're at, the stairwell. You'd be, like, on and the stairs. Uh, otherwise, you'd be detected. Yeah, Travis. so there's... There's no... Um, and there's... There's no way... There, That's the only way through? Um... You mean like the only way to get uh, down below? So we could just keep going down the stairs and we'd see new things or we have to like... Yeah, right. So cargo so if is? you continue down the... Well, you think the cargo hold is down the stairs. Uh, but is there a different way down? You're not sure. You could go check somewhere else. And then you got like the literal outside of the ship. So that's an option if you want to try some climbing. And then, So they'll see us if we try to keep going down the stairs then? There's a risk of them seeing you, and I would leave it. it to something like a, uh, uh, something like a roll under your dexterity, and it'd be whoever's highest. All right. We got to make it look good. Uh, if they see us, uh, tell them where the buyers uh, having a look at. Uh... In our pajamas. <laughs> We got lost. We're looking for the bathroom. Mine is clogged. <laughs> okay. Uh, who, who's got the highest? Highest what? Dex. <laughs> um, let's see. My Dex is nine. A nine. Okay. Uh, I think that's the highest. Mine is eight. All right, yeah. Bill and me roll 2d6 skin under 9. Oof. So you um you start to like you know <laughs> try to sneak your way down the stairs, not make any noises uh as they're they've got their backs to you anyways. And then uh at one point um something gets pushed off the stairs uh by your foot. And it clinks down below. Um, and uh, one of them turns around. Uh, but then, like, you uh, duck down below the railing. And then uh, he gets the other person's attention and starts talking again. You're able to continue on. So you make it down into the cargo hold. Where there is the... Uh... You're able to, because you're trying to sneak past them, evade... Uh, the, the, the walking fire patrol at the lower deck just by waiting until they're gone. Uh, and then it's not hard for you. Um, I mean, you're a merchant Marine. Um, you, um, yeah. you make your way to, um, uh, where the, uh, the, the cargo hold would be, um, in the cargo hold, there are more guards. Um, you determine that. And then you're able to quickly determine that this PDP, PDP, 
T alpha uh, beta is not in the cargo hold. And, um, and lastly, okay. So this is like a pharmaceutical. So it's, it's held in controlled storage. Um, like any kind of pharmaceutical, it is, uh, uh, it's, it's controlled, but then this stuff is like, you know, liquid platinum too. So, um, and it has its own guard. If you can figure out a way to get past the guards, uh, and get into, uh, the, this shelf of controlled substances, not only would you have access to the PDPT beta, but a bunch of other drugs. <laughs> Yeah, well, we might as well try it. Okay. Gotta have some resale value. Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so what do I need to do here? Well, there, you tell me. There's two guards here. It's just standing outside the doors, or? Yep. Okay. They look. They look bored. And what, uninterested. What's the area like around, right around here? Is it just like a bit, a door off the main cargo hold, or is there like a hallway leading to it? Or yeah, great question. Now there's a hallway at an elbow intersection. Uh, there are other um, rooms and doors back on this side. Um, actually, give you. Uh... <laughs> but they don't lead into. Uh... <laughs> I just, yeah, just looking at your illustration here. I think it's very serviceable. Uh. <laughs> and uh, there's, you know, there's like a bunch of stuff that, you yeah. know, so like you'll have like a cork board here with mandatory safety stuff and mandatory yeah. fun. And you've yeah. got some emergency equipment here on the wall. Probably um, a schedule. Probably a copy pan. of the schedule. Yeah. Is there a copy of the schedule? Yes. All right, I'll snag that. Oh, it's it's next to the guards, unfortunately. Oh, oh. This okay. is the emergency equipment. Uh, okay, all right. So is there anything we have that we could, like... Is there is there a way we could draw their attention off from the door? There's not a fire alarm we can pull somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, can we look like or do you have are you are you who's the better engineer? Ooh. Let me have a look again here. Don't look at me. Everybody has engineering, engineering one. one. Yeah, but somebody might have a, a higher one, I don't know. I have ornamental horticulture too. <laughs> <laughs> can we hide behind the potted plant in the corner? You know it's like the bush the potted bush is moving. Yeah. <laughs> Your uh, horticultural delivery is here, sir. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you all about it. <laughs> um, I th could we not? We could probably try something engineering-wise if we could. Is there a way? Okay, does this hallway perhaps loop around? Is this? Is there a back Absolutely. area where the? Yeah. Okay. Well, then perhaps we could go back the other way, come back, and do something in the walls with an engineering role. Um, that would short the power, cause some sort of spark, something like that. Well, let's start with the intention. Is your intention mm -hmm. to just cause a distraction, harm yeah. them, Draw vacate them, away them? from the door? Okay. Um, well, I... So you would know the, uh, what is it called? The um, general orders, I think is what they're called, that, you know, at least one person is not going to leave this post until relieved. That's just yeah. like a universal, even the Zodani have that. So, um, maybe, but that doesn't maybe mean I, that like, you know, one of them might not leave or might ca not cause a distraction, but I just want to throw that out there as a detail that like both of them aren't going to probably run off. Uh, and only probably, I might even like leave that to a roll, but. Well, we got to get in that room. That much is clear, right? Yes. So what's, what's the best way? You, you, want to try, you want to try charming them? You want to try, you know, I don't know. Seeing if um, if there's some, or maybe convincing them that... Um, Let me frame some options, uh, and then we can, like, I'll clarify the environment based on that. So uh, I'm hearing you say, uh, do you want them to, like, flee? So uh, 
you could do that uh, if it were like if you caused a bad enough thing going on. I think even like even a, a well-trained guard, if there were say a firefight down the corridor, uh, they're yeah. not they're not going to worry about the drugs, right? Like they're going to go to the thing that matters more. So the key there is you're going to have to create something that matters more than this priceless drug, or at least the illusion thereof. Um, a distraction, uh, yeah, you could do something mechanical. You could do something like cause an emergency. Uh, you could just do something kind of basic human, like, oh, no, look over there, like whatever, you know, come up with a plan for that. So we got get them away, which is going to require something big distraction, which could be something minor. And there's combat as an option, like, uh, OK, then, here's my suggestion. And then, and then charming. So, you know, I, I suggest we set up some sort of overheating piece of electronics or something that could that could pop or cause a problem and then like have Pipley run down saying you know there's they've they've it's it's crazy they've taken hostages uh or something maybe okay, maybe that they, they would they would have to dang it so like there... you want me to like lay down an accusation and then something goes off that seems to verify it right is that what you're saying? Uh, the problem is they they probably have communications. They're gonna check like right away. So, yeah, I mean, that's probably too outlandish, isn't it? Uh, I mean, we're unarmed, so combat is ranked slightly above that one. Yeah. Um, I'm liking the engineering throw the fire alarms thing. I think that's our best and, shot. I wish Mark Cello was here. Can we can we mess? Uh with the the airflow in such a way that like it registers as being uh like toxic or dangerous or something are these do these guys have like vac suits do they have breathers no, or anything no no they just have regular bdus the c, c the blue ones okay. um so okay can, yeah and uh, then like have you run down there and say hurry up uh, something rather i don't know okay it's so, like gas leak or something all right so shipley's going to come around to this side and try to like draw their attention about something mm -hmm. And then, uh, what is Bellamy is going to try to create a mechanical diversion that aids that, and then run up but and it try to, to. It has to trigger. It has to trigger on the other side, wherever Shipley's coming from. <laughs> That's the thing. It has to be prepped over there. All right. Um, okay. Uh, oh, you could do that. Okay, that's fine. Uh, now you're talking about a problem with time because you're going to have to like run and then get to a closed door. And get it open. But you can do that. You can do that. Let's not dither. So here you go. Uh, this is going to be the first. It's all going to come down to this mechanical role. So uh, it as just, soon as I set this thing to go off, I'm going to make it try to sprint back around to the other side. So this will determine <laughs> this will determine how well this goes. Okay. Uh, like so if it goes really well, uh, this distraction is going to give you plenty of time. If it goes mediocre or not great then it's going to give you very little time and if it goes terribly then it's going to like just That's draw attention work. all right <laughs> oh. so 2d6 uh and your your target is of course eight wow okay that went really well with a nine so um nice so well, you no. you you create this uh th this distraction over here um and it's it's quite dramatic uh the uh i don't, I don't know if you connect maybe some some lines uh, like hydraulic lines to um, to one of the uh, the sensors on the wall, uh, which on a ship, I mean, this is devastating at sea to have something like this happen. All of a sudden, the sensors start reading that like there's toxic gas and stuff in the air, and and then you you just take off booking it. You go back around the other way, and then what do you do, Shipley? Um, I'll run up to the door and ask them for help and be all distressed and say the alarm went off in my room. I can't find anyone. I think I'm like, there's this terrible smell and 
people are like, someone's unconscious upstairs. And uh, I'm just like hysterical and asking them for help and playing out being the the clueless um, uh, corporate person. Yeah, the best thing is you're able to draw them over to a corner. Uh, this is enough of a distraction, at least, telling me for you to act. Now this door is closed and locked, uh, but you have plenty of time. Um. All right. <laughs> um. All right. So I I'm gonna. I guess, is there a panel nearby the door? I suppose I could hotwire this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, all right, so we got, we got a few options here. Uh, let's, let's do it in three rounds before a complication happens. So the first round, uh, it's just a, it's to meet an eight. I don't, unless you have, I don't think you have any skill for that. So it's just to do an eight. I don't think so. What, what do I? You have all the basic traveler skills plus skill yeah. zeros. So yeah, 2d6 um, to get eight. Oh dear. Okay. Mm -mm. Uh, you shock yourself uh, for uh, one point of damage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Sh Shipley, you, you look behind them, uh, you know, over their shoulder. You can see this going on. You see Billamy shock himself, but you still have their attention. Um, all right. You, you got two, two more things you can try before this, before it starts getting complicated. Are you going to try it again? Oh no. Seven. It's almost there. Shock yourself. You take two points of damage. Uh, you can try again or you can try a different, you know. I mean, obviously, well, okay, I'll make you, I'll tell you this. If you literally smash open the door somehow or pry it open, it will work, but someone will know that you did it. Later, at least. Uh, okay. Is there, look, is there an, uh, on this bulletin board or whatever uh, sitting around, is there like a piece of... Um... A key or conductive material or, or like a, a metal rod of some sort that yeah there's a off. there's a whole like safety thing about don't shock yourself over here on the board <laughs> <laughs> it's like glo <laughs> gloves and it says use these gloves <laughs> okay i'll grab a pair of those gloves there uh and then yeah it, it, I'm, I'm just gonna i'll give you I, a plus a two <laughs> then... plus two with the gloves <laughs> there was a magic item sitting right there the whole time. <laughs> All right, I guess one more shot. Oh, right? You're in a rush. I understand. Nice. Oh my gosh. That'll be a nine with the plus two. <laughs> you're able they're to make it happen. Now, probably they're going to detect the shortness wall, but it might show up later, right? So you're able to uh, short the power and then open the latch from the door and get it open, and shh, cold air like rushes out from. Uh, in this thing, and there's this small kind of like a closet space on the inside uh, where there's just like drugs. It's very easy to identify PBT beta. Uh, so you're right. you uh, you can see that they have a ton of it, a ton of it, ton of it. Nice. Um, I'll take pictures of a bunch of it and then it, take a few bottles. All right. Yeah, you're able to with the pictures. You know, with the recording, you're able to. You know, it's obvious that. You could like kind of do an accounting of it later. Uh, there's also like a ton of other drugs in here. Or you, uh, yeah, it, I mean, I don't know how much is there. Does there happen to be a satchel sitting around? <laughs> <laughs> how many keep it in your pocket? <laughs> so I'll, I'll make you a deal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here's some options. First of all, you could just run out of here with the, the evidence and the and the PBPD alpha beta drug. Uh, alternately, you could um, just grab a random drug, and that will that will add no additional complication. Okay, so if you just grab a random drug and run, you could have a random drug, or there's a chance that there one of these are, guards are going to start coming back. And um, and it's going to be complicated. Um, the only thing that matters is probably the PBT. Um, so you know, yeah, uh, but I can grab at least that, right? Or yeah, and you can I grab mean, one other random drug. Oh, ran yeah, I'll, I'll I'll grab a random drug then. Okay. Um, fun. All right. So you uh you you grab the antibiotics and the drugs and you and you you run off back down the hall you close the door um the power because it's intermittent it comes back on it locks the door and you run back off 
and um, this person comes back and guards doesn't notice, and then this these people kind of leave with Shipley, and Shipley they escort you back to your room. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so. Oh, you don't want to sell us any, huh? All right, well, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Ends the brakes, I guess. See you around. <laughs> so, um, I'm excited to figure out what the random drug is, so I want to see what that's going to be. Drugs, page 44. That is not lining up. Page 44? Oh, I see. Uh, it's in book two. Okay, drugs. Um, Good night, Charlotte. Uh, roll uh, a D... Roll 2D6. Seven. Uh, this is a truth serum, which is also um, something they shouldn't have. Probably, I mean that's illegal. That's they mm -hmm. should not have that. It. Um, well, Doc Ocean will be able to tell you about it if you want. Right. Great. Um, all right. So <clears throat> the, uh, the next day, I five, oh. five Shipley when we're back in our quarters, <laughs> um, the next day, uh, you're brought to the conference room, like I'd mentioned last time. And, um, same thing as I mentioned before, uh, basically Anna Gregor, her disposition is completely different. She was friendly the last time you talked to her. Um, she She's also a Fifth Frontier War veteran. And she's got cyberware on her face and stuff. And she... Um, you know, she, she was like super friendly with you last time. Uh, and um, this time she's cold and professional. And she says, I'm so sorry. But it turns out we do not have any available sim uh, samples. Um, and, um, we do want to abide by, um, you know, cause I think Shipley brought up last time, like, can't you get some more? And she said, you know, we would never do something like that. And, uh, and she says, we'll have transportation, bring you back, uh, um, uh, bring you back to, uh, city as soon as we can. And about an hour or two pass in the next day. And uh, guards come to your room. And they say, uh, please come with us. Sure. You follow the guards? There's two each. Uh, I, I mean, it's not. we don't have any other option. What are we going to say? No. <laughs> are you, are you Trying to knock them out. Get in a fist fight. Wrestle two. with SMG away. I don't know. Sure. All right. So you, uh, uh, what? I mean, Shipley, do you, uh, do you comply? Uh, yeah. I don't see the option right now. Okay. All right. I don't so, want to risk your city. Uh, they, uh, they bring you out onto the main deck, and Anna Gregor is there, and um, you can tell that either the direction of the ship has changed or the winds have changed. Um, and um. You can see that all of the, the weapons emplacements are manned. And, um, and there's a bunch of guards with her as well, probably uh, a dozen. It looks like they were, she was talking to one of the staff. And um, you don't see any other staff workers about. And she says, um, So... Lying then. I don't you know what lying. you're talking about. You were lying? 
who was lying? You know, after everything that we experienced back in the Rylanor sector, after everything we saw, I thought that there would be some understanding. I thought, I thought, <laughs> but I should have known better. Out here in the Spinward Marches, out here on the fringe, you can't trust people. Even when they have that, she points to your cyberware. Even if there's some kind of kinship, some 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 shared experience, it's just. Um, hey, I'm with you 100. percent I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, she uh, takes out like a data pad and she shows your ship roster. You know, that's like the Lady of Mercia, Captain Bellamy, blah 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 blah, wanted criminals. Right. Why, that, you think that means you can't trust us? I know that you, uh, I know that you came here to, uh, to try to check on our operations, that, uh, that we violated our, uh, uh, our harvesting numbers. We so, came here to get extra above harvesting numbers. You think they would have sent someone legit? <laughs> well, <laughs> the good news is, you're going to get to see everything because we're going to take as much of that samples as we can today. And then we're going to pack it up and we're going to get out of here. And to hell with McClellan. And I am still trying to decide whether or not I want to just throw you overboard or wait until we finish or just shoot you here and now. So uh, why don't you cut a deal with us? I mean, you don't really, probably... you don't seem to be in a position to make a deal, Captain. Well, I, I mean, I, we've also don't we we've also got nothing to lose, right? Might as well hear me out. You got a couple of minutes. I don't have a couple of minutes actually. I need to prepare for a Dagadasi uh, hunt. All right. Well, look, we're we're well positioned to to screw over anybody uh, that's trying to screw you over. I mean, we're, 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 we're just tools. All right. Everything we're, everybody wants us to do something. And all we want to do is get the hell out of this subsector. And everyone has something that they want from us. So why don't you just join the queue and we can just keep on surviving. And, uh, everybody can, we can turn it into a win, win, win. I don't know how exactly, but. Why the hell not? I'm standing here on a, uh, a, a city-sized factory ship with a paramilitary corporation um, that answers to me directly that's about to split off from its parent company. And we're about to make several billion credits and you have nothing. So, guards, uh, just keep them here you for need now. time. We can go back <laughs> and tell, install them. You need time to get your stuff together. You need time to get your split. You need time to get off world before they figure out what you're doing and call their other forces. If they hired you, they hired a bunch more people just like you. Uh, make a we can roll. buy you that time to make a break. Oops. Make a roll under your social. Okay, give me a second. Thank God That's it wasn't social. me. <laughs> <laughs> Social's eight. Okay. <laughs> she thinks about it and she's like, hmm. Yeah, maybe we could work something out actually. And with that, I'm gonna shift over to the uh, to the other group. So, books and uh, Doc Ocean and Chapman, Lothak, you all wake up in the morning. Uh, you don't get nearly enough sleep, and you uh, you hear all these like uh, noises, and you hear singing and stuff, and um, you can see people in these uh, suits. They're like vac suits. Um, but tighter, and um, they uh, look like they're like, how do I put this? They look like they haven't been put through a die. Like, it looks like they're, they look like they are uh, all the same bland, kind of off color, like every part of these suits are. And anyways, there's these little uh, things they look like uh, this. 
And uh, they're all sitting there in the docks and... Um, let's see. So little Kafid uh, comes to you in the morning with uh, one of these suits on. She tosses you some suits and she says, um, uh, Do any of you have any watercraft or piloting experience? All of you have pilot one. Yes. Um, I Generally, I know in the past, uh, Chapman was piloting, but all of us, any of us would be happy to help. Um, since Stock Ocean kind of did his his part with the healing and stuff, um, I, you know, I could I could pilot. Uh, she she ignores you and she motions toward the two. There's two of them, and the canopies are open. She says, "We actually have two available. All of you could hunt today." And my question would be, and you've never operated one of these things before. Uh, I'm assuming that Chapman and Books would go together because they always do. They're like the the bad kids in class, basically. Uh, and then Doc Ocean and Lothak. But do you want to mix it up? Uh, that way you each get to pilot one, uh, one of these things, too. Sure. That sounds good with me. Yeah, that's fine with me. Okay, you go over to the uh, the dock after you get your uh, this this thing on, and um, uh, a couple of these people they help you like arrange the suit that you're in, um, and um, uh, you have like a like a, a sealed hood that uh, that kind of sits back behind uh, your, you, and then you sit down in this thing, and it and it has some fairly predictable controls. It's nothing that alien. Um, they have mechanical style controls with a yoke and stick, and um, you have some switches and buttons and things, and uh, it has an oper operable display panel. The display panel looks like a higher tech than what would be on the Lady of Mercia. Um, and um, using your basic piloting skills, which are, you know, because you all got the traveler skills when we started, um, you, you can tell that this uh, has, let's see, um, let me actually just get this out here. It can operate faster when it's uh, above water, but it's submersible. And... Um, trying to see let's see it goes um 70 to 120 kilometers per hour it goes 30 kilometers per hour underwater um and it has i think uh a missile launcher and it has a um trying to find basically it has a um uh trying to find a laser a laser gun uh the laser gun um is like an automatic burst fire laser gun um it's similar to the uh the what's it called the laser rifle that does like 6d damage um but it's designed obviously for these big animals um and you can fire five shots per round when firing the laser rifle, uh, or, or the, the, I'm sorry, the laser cannon. But each subsequent shot after the first one is at a DM minus two. And if you have a modifier, uh, it would be the same as what you would use for the laser rifle, I think is what it's called from the book. So if you have a bonus to that, then you can apply that bonus. Otherwise, it's just an eight to hit. Okay. You're not sure what the damage is. But I guess uh, since you guys roll the damage, let me see if I can get it for you. It actually kind of depends. Um, looks like, generally speaking, 
one die times 10 damage for the laser gun. And one die times 200 with a missile. And you only have a few missiles. And lastly, I guess you probably want your hit points. A hunter foil has uh, 50 hits. And you're able to determine all that by looking at it, and you think you have a sense of how to control the thing. But uh, any questions before we get started? Um, no, it seems straightforward enough. I think you can go one hex per turn. So, okay, so uh, they all start to disembark. You guys are kind of wobbly at first. You kind of yaw off to the side, and, you know, and eventually you kind of figure it out, and you start to catch up. To the other uh, hunter foils. Unfortunately, the hunter foils are white, so uh, they're hard to see on this background. Let me give you some hunter foils that you can use. Looks. Looks, you should be able to control this hunter foil. That one? Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you move it? Yes. Great. I just moved it and then moved it back. I'm going to actually give you guys resources so that you can see it. Because I know it's hard to see. And then, uh, and you can see everything else on this page, right? Uh, yes. Control this one. A siphon control it. Awesome. Okay. So um, you f fly out uh, un underwater uh, in this formation, um, and eventually uh, you can see the uh, the the ocean kind of like um, darkening ahead, as if you're approaching a landmass. Um, eventually is clear to you that it is not a landmass. It is a um, an island-sized aquatic organism. Um, and um, leading out from it, you hear like uh, you, you get these, these things that you start to detect as there are a bunch of fish out around it. Some of them very large. You know, I don't know what the dozen, you know, dozens of meters across. Uh, and then you, you, you see your query and uh, the, you realize there's a problem. Uh, the hunter foils are not speaking in your language. I think books can speak their language because he has a 12 in, in uh, intelligence. I think we determined that. But uh, I don't think Doc Ocean, you can understand what's on the on the comms. Uh, you just hear yelling, yelling and stuff. But these things appear on your radar, and then um, and then there's lots of little things, boop, 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 that start to show up. And you see them start to kind of like split off, like split off and peel off toward all your different ships and these ships start to, to split off I think uh, let me make sure that it's how, how, how far you can go
I think uh, I think you can go quite a bit, but um, I'm gonna say basically you can travel three hexes per turn. Three hexes, okay. Um, since you're following behind, I'll actually have these guys act first. And they split off, and it seems like they're going to try to engage the screen of, uh... Sorry, if I grab yours, you know, just drag it back. I tried to put a resource bar on it, but it didn't do anything. Maybe if I put... Still didn't do anything. Uh, is this one yours, Stock Ocean? Yes. Okay, I'm going to fix this. Uh, always for everyone. How oh, ironic. And then, is this one yours, uh, Books? Yes. Okay. Damn. Okay. All right, they are going to try to attack these things. One, two. How much damage did I say it did? 1D times 10? Yeah. Sixty, fifty damage. Okay, you see uh, a couple of these things, uh, just like you see, just like puffs of like black, you know, that that's just blood. By the way, they look like this. Kill two more of them. Um, Alright, so that's their turn. Then these things come in to attack the hunter foils. Or that one hits. That one hits. All those hit. Okay. Um, Dag sharks. Did I get a 12? No, I didn't get any 12. Okay. Oh, gosh. Hundred. Okay, two, two of the hunter foils are destroyed outright. Right off the bat. You see the dag sharks, what they do is they slam into the, the canopy, and it cracks the canopy, and then the the, the hunter foil just, like, starts to drift off of the, the power being destroyed. And you can actually see the body of one of the nomads, like, float out, you know, drowning. All right. It's your turn. These, uh, these big ones, they close in as well. Doc Ocean, you want to go first, or...? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go first, sure. Okay. So, I'm going to go one, two, three, up here. Then I'm going to fire at this one. Okay, you can do that. Do I roll? 2d6 uh, to, re to get an 8. You can do it five times with a minus two to each subsequent time. That hits. That does 1d6 times 10 damage. That's just enough. You uh, destroy, you bring vengeance on this, uh, this one that was 
this uh, hunter foil that was killed, and you destroy the dag shark that killed that destroyed it. it. Like rams into it, and then peels off, and then you come up and you fire lasers into it, and it kills it. All right, books. Okay, I'm gonna move over here. I'm gonna go for this guy right here. So that, that, yeah, that hits. That uh, hits. Yeah, roll d6 for damage. d6 times 10. 60. Which one are you targeting? Uh, this dude right here. It didn't ping. Is it... Uh, oh, is it... I was doing this. Uh, this one. Yeah. And could I roll again with a uh, hmm. minus 2? Yeah, I don't know. Let me see. Uh... Five shots per round, every shot thereafter. The same animal may, may be attacked more than once. The same animal may be attacked more than once during a single event. The gunner must first declare which will be attacked. Uh, then the gunner states if they will be attacked at what point um, to try to shop if it attacks. Um, Sounds like it's only one. Did not cover all possible approaches to the craft. In the same hex. The hunterful does not have a covering companion if it's attacking. So if you get attacked by one, it changes it. Um, may fire up to five shots per round. I don't see anything that says you can't, so yeah, go for it. I won't do the NPCs okay. that way, though. Nice. Yeah. Which one are you targeting? Uh, this one right here. Uh, I just hit it. I don't know if it picked. No, I think you probably have to select the meeple up in the top left and then the select thing in order for it to do that. I think you probably got something else selected because it's not pinging. Or you have the uh, ping set to something, private ping or something. But, uh, That's let's, weird. Uh, this uh, one or is it this one? Uh, the first one. You need the first one. All right. Uh, let's see. And you rolled an 8, so you'd roll a d6. Six easily kills the stag shark. Nice. Right, yeah, you got three more, and I'll, I'll actually get back to you, Doc Ocean. Because I mean, you, get to, you didn't get to fire four more times. You got three more um, hooks. Actually, wasn't it um, with a minus two penalty? Oh yes, actually, that's right. So that that would that miss. Not hit, that yeah, would that, miss. That's right. Uh, you can attempt uh, three more times, though. And it doesn't stack, right? It just minus two. It does stack. Time. It yeah. does stack. Okay, so I basically have to get a well down. Okay, good. All right. And, and then, then. I mean, I guess it doesn't. It's not possible to. to yeah, without some kind of bonus or something. Yeah, I think so. Okay, Doc Ocean. That means if you want, you can uh, roll. Um, at least twice, then. I'll say that you're only within, well, range of these two. A 9 minus 2 uh, misses. So you can try one more time, I think. Minus 4. So, yeah. Whoa! That also is a critical hit. Um, Good job. That's... You're not attacking me. Uh, okay. Yeah, you can you can roll uh, for damage. Sorry, one d six or two d six since it was a crit. Uh, it's one d six. There's like special rules for a crit, but I want to see what happens. Uh, I don't think it'll matter. Okay, see, that is enough to kill it anyway. <laughs> you take it out. Okay, uh, let's see here. So that is your all's turn. Uh, if you haven't moved, you can also move up to three hexes. Uh, otherwise, let's see, these things are going to move in. Oh, it gets about that far. Let's 
to clarify, not the sharks, but the little ones are our targets, right? That's what we're here to kill? No. Although you probably don't know that. <laughs> you probably don't know. No one asked. But it's... Uh, your character probably doesn't know this, but it's these and this one. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant these little tiny ones, the dag sharks. No, 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 no. The second bigger ones are oh, the ones yes. that I'm talking about. Yeah, totally. That's where they're the pre-adolescent dag, uh, dagadasi. Did I already moved this one. Can't remember. I'm gonna move it. Okay. These things they come in to uh, to attack, um, and it's at that point that all of a sudden you hear uh, stuff up above you. And all of a sudden, you can see that uh, the, the Dagadasi, like, just like flashes of light and stuff, are hitting into it. It looks like they're going to take out an entire mature Dagadasi. And you hear, like, just yelling over the, the comms, like, da 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 da, in this foreign tongue. And they start to, like, peel off and, like, just split up and, like, dive away and everything. What do you do? Splitting up and diving away. The the, the other, uh, yeah the other hunter foils they just like peel off from the attack and they, they start to like you know and there's like laser fire that's like piercing down from above uh, on the because uh, uh, you're you're underwater and then you've got the the, the this island sized sea life ahead of you where you can see above that like there's like stuff striking it uh, on the surface. We're pretty far away from any kind of like radius, right? Oh no, you're right next to it. And also, uh, you can also see trails of, of something that's entering the water, like these small objects that are like barreling towards things down under the water. Okay, we probably get out of there um, if we're able to. Uh, where are you gonna go? opposite direction or maybe like uh, let's see so we're next to it I I think we should just get a, go in the opposite direction go maybe further down to the to the water if possible okay duck ocean what do you think uh I think I'm gonna move to here I'm gonna launch a missile at this one okay uh Let's see, I'm gonna move books. I'm gonna move you back, uh, Doc Ocean. You can roll to hit. Did I hit at this range? Did um, I use one of my missiles? I don't know. Um, Distant attacks. You have to do an 11 plus to hit. So yes, but it's only on an 11. Okay. All right. Um, that is a, we'll say, a short range attack. Um, well, I'll call it a medium range attack because at short range it can damage you. <laughs> um, an 11. Okay. You can roll, uh, let's see. Um, what is it, uh, 1D, and it's times 100. Got 600. That is enough to kill one of the Ogul. Got three missiles left. It cracks open the Ogul, and it starts to float up to the surface. Um, Can I... Well, can I use something? Is there some sort of way to attach my ship to it? Uh, what's your intention? What are you trying to do? I'm like, trying to retrieve it and bring it back with me. Oh. Um, 
Well, to clarify, uh, it looks like the hunt's being called off. Because, like, they're, like, peeling off and, like, the the Dagadasi is under attack by something else. The big the big fish, not the, the little ones. Or the little ones, too, because there's, like, uh, trails of, like, uh, torpedoes or missiles or something that's, like, flying under the water as well. But you could drag it away, but you don't get any indication that they're trying to do that. And my dog farted. I wanna, yeah, I wanna, <laughs> yeah, I wanna try and drag it away with me. Okay, you uh, you go up and clip your ship onto it, and you start dragging away one of the ogles. And then I retreat and go back the way I came. Yeah. All right. Meanwhile, uh, let's see here. On the factory ship. Uh, all these like laser batteries are just opening up uh, onto the surface of this Dagadasi. Uh, you can hear this creaning like, you know, like in the the, the water is actually like um, uh, you can you can see the waves actually increase, and uh, there are missiles that are firing from the missile launchers, and they're going down into the water. Um, I was wondering if we were able to. Communicate with our crewmates while this is going on. You got your stuff? Uh, is this. Are, are all of y'all doing this? <laughs> yeah, I will we're, say. All, we're all underneath the ship. Yeah, we're all down there. Um, you got room for a couple of more? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Are they going to pay close attention to us if we wander, like, near the deck of the ship? Like, um, I, I will give, uh, I, I'll make it two rolls, okay? okay. So one roll will be just, like, if you can dash and, like, jump over the board and get into the water. Uh... <laughs> Is that, I is, was hoping more of a like a nonchalant, like a stroll, sort of like let, waiting, you know, it's all, I, I, it's all relaxed. You're just like, okay, you know, like, no. Well, I, I mean, like, it's not a it's not a viable escape route, you know, so it's like, why would they be paying attention in the middle of a big firefight? Um, hmm. Okay, you've convinced me. Uh, so is the, is the goal to just step off, like, from the boat and just get in the water? Pretty much. I mean, <laughs> if, Shipley's, if Shipley's okay with that. Shipley I mean, does not want to get shot. Yeah, so okay. I'm just going to be like, you know, like, tell him, like, we're on the starboard side of the ship, about three quarters Come of the way Help. down. <laughs> if you could pop up there in about a minute, that'd be great. Okay, so you, um, you, you just, like, give that message discreetly and then you signal Shipley and you slowly back away to the edge and then you just like drop off the edge uh, you drop down into the water and guards go up over the edge and they see you and they start you know firing da -da 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 -da, and there's like rounds firing down but uh, but they're unable to hit you and you're like the water by the way is nuts like you, we're talking like these like uh, rip current things are tossing you around you know and like oh. um so, so bullets are flying in rip current. This is a really good idea, by the way. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, back with uh, the others. Uh, so, uh, Doc Ocean, you've got this big fish that you've got connected to here, and Books is over here away from the fight. The good news is you're away from the fight. The bad news is you will need to get to this side of this um uh, this hex map, the northeast side of it, uh, is where you will need to get if you want to rescue your co companions. Uh, I mean, I guess <coughs> it was it was nice nice knowing you guys. That's a hike. <laughs> Maybe we could meet us halfway and uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You see what what we would have to pass to, to rescue you? <laughs> um, uh, no, no, we could we could make it work. Um, <laughs> let's, let's do it. Let's do uh, it. Yeah. Um, by the way, you also have um, 
Hernandez on board, the uh, representative from the uh, Pan Galactic Friends of Life. But uh, anyways, um, okay, so yeah, you're gonna move three hexes. Go for it. I'm gonna roll for events. I'm two behind. Let me see if I get any events. I think I did not get any so far, but um, so this will. This is what it comes down to: is you can keep moving. So did you guys move three, three so far? I did. All right, I'm just gonna kind of get a sense. Added two. Added two. All the poor fish. They're doing very badly. So are the uh, the other things, though. Okay, none of that matters. Okay. But this stuff kind of like moves around. We've got like dag sharks attacking and everything. Okay, move. You can move another three hexes, and I'm gonna roll for uh, to see if you get another event. You actually move six hexes. I'm gonna roll for two events. I get an event on five plus. You guys move six hexes. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, you can move six more hexes. No events. It's uh, going well so far. Uh, meanwhile, in the rip currents, <laughs> uh, if you two could please roll under your endurance. I think I made it to them. All right. This will have occurred probably around the second round. To see if under you take endurance, you say. Yeah, this is to not drown. Okay. Oh, I made it. Nice. Okay. Um, I don't think that works. Let me double check. But I'm under eight. I'm good. No worries. Nice. Okay. Yeah. You guys hang on. In fact, you're even able to make it up to the surface where they'll be able to pick you up. Uh, books. You're able to pick up one of them. Who do you pick? <laughs> <laughs> pick Bellamy. He's got the our payout. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, Should play being a hero. Uh, she ha uh, our endurance is about the same, but one different. I mean, it would, from a logical standpoint, it would make more sense to save the captain. Sorry. Ship no. <laughs> no, take her first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, Doc Ocean. Uh, let's see. One, two, three. So you have two more events. So I'm gonna go and roll them. No events. You all are able to weave your way through as there's like missiles crashing into these hunter foils and into the big fish and everything. And um, you're able to weave through all this laser fire and stuff without, uh, without it affecting you. Now, here you are. You're able to get onto the surface, crack open the canopy, drag the uh, sopping wet crew member of yours into the, into the canopy, close the canopy, and you've got these two hunter foils. Now what do you do? Still they, got my, uh, I've still got my, my, uh, catch donor. Uh, no, but you can go get it. Uh, but you don't have to go back through it. Uh, you, you just want, you just want the fish? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, you, you got it. You can go back around. Uh, but generally speaking, like, what is the plan? Like, what, what are you guys going to do? So we head back towards the fish nomads, the, uh, Back to, uh, like the yeah, back to the ship nomads, yeah. Yeah. You you would abandon the uh, this the the the, the hunt uh, with their hunter foils and leave them to their fate, but then go back to the ship. Oh, they don't know. Maybe they probably don't know. Right. Don't like, know what. Did the hunter foils abandon everything as well? No, uh, th I'm sorry. To be clear, this has turned into a war between Sea Harvester and the Sea Nomads. They both went. They both went for a Dogadasi, and then they met each other. And now they're fighting. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Um, where? What are our options? Like, where could we go? Yeah. So let me frame some options. Sure. Uh, one thing is you could just flee. Uh, it might take you like two weeks. You might smell funny, and you might have to eat some of this weird fish here and cook it, but you can slowly make your way back to one of the uh, the, the city spires of, uh, of this planet, 
and slowly work your way back to a port and just get out of here and just leave this mess. Uh, there are no rolls required for that. Uh, a second option is you can pick a side and like get in the fray and like decide you're going to fight. Uh, a third option would be go back to the the Sea Nomad ship. You, you can't go back to the factory ship. They would just try to shoot you at this point. Uh, if you went back to the Sea Nomad ship, they would... I think you would need to try to deceive them. Uh, because if they thought you just fled and left the fight, they would probably apprehend or try to kill you. So, those are my thoughts, unless somebody else is has some a, other ideas. Is it a fight to the death? Oh, uh, I don't think that's clear. I mean, yeah. I mean, well, no, I guess Not what yet. I mean is, is this a fight that these people can hope to win based on what I saw of the armaments on the factory ship? Uh, not on this basis. However, what you do see is like a large contingent of the um, uh, uh, of these uh, hunter foils are actually barreling toward the ship. There's probably two dozen of them. They're not part of this main group. And it looks like they're going to try to board the ship and take it by force. Oh. Um. Let's say we get out of here. Let's make our way back to the city. How long a trip is that again? Uh, I'll say that it's going to take you... Why are you... What do you ask? Because I might, I might be, you know, I'm kind of... I mean, it's, again, it's a pragmatic question. Can we actually survive that? You, you can survive it. So the, the, the consequence would be that you'd be like, good luck with that. <laughs> and probably both sides would hate you. But otherwise, you could just make it away. Both got killer information on them. Like, yeah. we both have what we want, don't we? We got pictures of McClellan. We've got pictures of the sea people. We've got all the data that we need. Let's get out of here. Yeah, plus Bellamy yeah. has our bonus, our payday bonus. I think I agree. Yeah, I can't argue with that. That's <laughs> 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 <Sounds> good. <laughs> Let's get Rick out of here. Rick said from Casablanca, I stick my neck out for no one. <laughs> <laughs> Only for the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> These people are becoming traveler players. Travelers. <laughs> You uh, you have a an uncomfortable sail uh, sailing journey on hunter foils that are not designed for that. Um, Hernandez does not blame you for this, uh, but he's incensed. He's like, I knew it. I knew that this was rotten. I knew that they were blah blah blah. He does that the whole two weeks, and you probably oh, probably have to take chunks of the blubber off this. Um, what are these things called again? They're called. Uh, Uh, you probably have to take chunks off this big ogle fish. It looks like a mix between a manta ray and a whale, with no eyes or anything, and just like these ports. Um, and uh, you eat on it uh, and drag it along with you for two weeks and finally make it back to one of the city spires of Squalia. Whoops, didn't mean to display the dead fish again. Okay, <laughs> so in fact, how do I get rid of it? I'm just going to put it off to the side because I don't know what to do with it. Here we go. Okay. So, um, you know, this city spire, it's not in the Federation of Ott Park. Uh, I, I suppose I have questions like, what do you do with Hernandez? What do you do with the big dead fish? What do you do with the hunter foils? Uh, you don't have to worry about trying to get to Ott Park. You just, like, dry off, spend some money, get a taxi, go back to Ott Park. Well, um, <clears throat> we need to split up into our original teams, and one of us has to deliver the photographic evidence to um, the lawyer, and the other deliver the physical evidence to Van Par Landleth. Portrayed, weren't you? Didn't somebody give you up? What do you mean? You all were made on the ship. Like, who made you? Who gave them the information that you all weren't who you said that you were? I don't know. I'm just saying, maybe it's risky to go back to McClellan or whoever that 
might have added you out or something. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just paranoid, I guess. Well, I mean, it's good to be paranoid. I'm down to split the party again and go back to our factions that we <laughs> obtained information for. I mean, the original plan, I don't see what the problem is, honestly. Okay. Unless unless it's Vampire Landleth that found out, that, that sent the uh, information. Which would figure. So... Uh, you take a taxi back to the Federation of Ott Park and you split up and you go to the rendezvous point that you have for um, uh, for uh, Rakamundra and for Van Parlanleth. So let's start with Rakamundra. Um, well, uh, and I think Rakamundra... Who met with who, actually? Because I thought Rakamundra, it was Books and Chapman and Doc Ocean, right? I believe. Am I crazy? Yes, definitely. Is that right, Books? Uh, that sounds right. I actually don't remember. I think so, because... <laughs> no, wait. Um, well, Books and Chapman met, met with... Books, Books and Chapman must have met with Vampire because he's the one who sent them to the, the sea people. Actually, I'm thinking that they met with both. Yeah. Because, uh... They also met with Rockamundra because they talked to, because they knew him and because they, uh, uh, yeah, he, he asked, um, yeah, yeah. But it uh, was, but it was, but it was us that Rockamundra delivered the fits. No, we had split up because we didn't want Vampire to recognize the original crew. Yes. So Vampire, the new yes. crew members went to Vampire and the old crew members went to Rockamundra. Okay, so um, um, no, oh no, no, no! I remember, I remember now. I know that it was Bellamy and Shipley that went to Vampire Landleth because I remember Vampire Landleth asking Bellamy like, "What's the problem?" And uh, oh, Shipley, yeah, yeah, and then the other, yeah. the others went to Rakamundra be uh, because uh, Rakamundra talked about like their legal problems and stuff before how they had represented him. So okay. So, um, but that still tracks with what you're trying to do because the original crew is the one that worked with Vampire Landleth. So, uh, okay, let's start with Rakamendra, uh, Books, and Doc Ocean. So you meet him again, and uh, he actually meets you at the um, uh, the Starport. Now you go to the hotel, and then there's a message left for you to meet at the Starport. Uh, and you go to the Starport, and it's covered everywhere with um, uh, with uh, ICZ from uh, from Iterati, ICZ uh, goons, people in black armor and weapons everywhere. And uh, managing the starport, doing the security checks, and uh, at the hotel he leaves you um, false identities. And yeah, I don't expect your audio to be too happy to see us again. Yeah. So, okay, anyways, you go through customs, uh, the false identities work. Almost like no problem at all. And uh, you go into the other side where your ship is, and uh, you find uh, there's a ship that, uh, that he's on, he, they, uh, and you meet him on a ship. And, uh, and he says, Well, um, things have changed on this planet and in this sector a lot just in the past 20, 48 hours since we last spoke. Is the job done? It is. And this would be books and Doc Ocean. No, oh, never mind. Yes, yes, we have the info. Pull yeah. out my camera and hand it to him. Okay. Uh, he takes that. Um, he says, my... A massive sea harvesting operation with missiles taking down an entire one of the, the elder of these beasts. Quite damning, I must say. 
It's too bad that, uh, and actually, I, I assume that you guys probably, because you met, you probably exchanged info and stuff, so you're able to pass this on. Uh, like the photos from the other group, right? Um, and, oh, yeah. and, 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 and actual direct photographic and video evidence of, uh, of the inventories. This is a nail shut case. You have done very well. Pushes your briefcase with 175,000 credits. Nice. Now, <clears throat> I, um, there is, uh, one loose end left. Um, where's the rest of your crew? Is, is he asking that? Yeah, he's asking you that. Yeah, you and Doc Ocean. Where's, where's your, the rest of your crew? Um, you know, they're off. They're off planet. We're meeting them on a different planet. Oh. I see. Well, that's probably best. Um, I was going to warn you. Um, if you haven't had any run ins with the criminal Van Parlanleth, um, that's what he, uh, what he will be now that we are able to present this information in the right way and to the right people. Um,. It seems like um, he must have never had any intention of paying you. Not that that matters now. Yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, I, I as a general rule, don't like to speculate, but I, you know, I appreciate your, um, just the fact that you seem to, uh, you know, to care about our, our business dealings, but... Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, thank you so much for the, uh, you know, for everything. I think I would try to just get out of there and not you're, really engage. Yeah, you start to, like, get up from the table, and he says, you're, you're wrong on both accounts, Mr. Bucks. How so? I don't care about your business dealings, and I'm not speculating. Oh. Okay, well, do, do tell, please. Furthermore, um... Not that this matters as much as it did, but um, I have a job offer for you. Keep going. Um, Lanleth uh, fled with an important part of an uh, important piece of uh, McClellan property. Um, we know where he is. It is uh, very dangerous. But if you can find Lanleth and finish him and kill him and destroy the property, we'll pay you a million and a half credits. Million and a half credits. Well, I think I would look over at uh, Doc Ocean and just kind of widen my eyes a bit, you know, and... Um, I, I don't know. I think... What is, uh, what is the cargo that he holds in his possession that's worth so much money? Part of the job and the pay, Doctor, is to not ask that question and not find out the answer. But for uh, four million and a half credits, we need proof that Lanleth is dead and that property which will be in a flight case, must be destroyed. Without question. When do you need an answer on if we take this job or not? Because, you know, we'd like to talk to the rest of the, the crew and just make sure they're okay with it. Well, I, I'm afraid, given the circumstances, that if you want this job and you want this the, the pay, the payout, um, you'll need to act quickly because... It seems that Lanleth was trying to sell off this property. And so um, the intelligence we have is that... Um, uh, I'm sure you've heard about this local insurgency. That's why all of these guards are here and everything. Yeah, yes. yeah, I've heard yeah. some rumblings and noticed, you know, some stuff. Yeah, yeah. From, a, from a distance. Well, my company is divesting from this region, and I'll be departing, 
and um, we'll provide you a checkpoint where you can get paid, assuming that you can accomplish this. But um, uh, those insurgents uh, knocked over an Imperial Navy depot in the Bowman system. Uh, after they occupied it, Mr. Landleth uh, seems to have arrived there and made a rendezvous with them in order to try to sell them this McClellan property. It seems that things became tense, and then on top of that, um, you can only assume that the Adorate fleet is on its way. So I'm afraid that you don't have very much time to make a decision. But it's up to you. I'll, I'll pull uh, books over to the and Chapman over to the side and lean in and say, let's just, let's just say that we're going to take the job and see where it leads us. We don't have to follow through with it. Let's just say that we're going to take it and see what comes of it. Yeah, I that sounds like a great idea. We could always we could always change our mind, but we don't want to lose this opportunity. And uh, okay. yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he stands up, you know, like he's getting ready to shake your hands and wish you goodbye so he could depart, get off his ship, you know, because they're going to flee and get out of this place. Yeah, shake hands nervously and get the frick out of there, yeah. Meanwhile, over at the rendezvous point uh, with Van Parlanleth. Oh, boy. <clears throat> I'll even give you Lothak. So, um... Oh <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah. Let's see here. Um, you go to the, uh... A given rendezvous point. Uh, you can imagine it's some kind of scuzzy place. An alleyway. And, um... You hear a, uh, a weapon charging. And uh, roll a d6 for surprise. Six. All right, let me see if they get three or less. A six. No one is surprised. <laughs> you hear the cocking of weapons, and uh, you hear weapons about to fire. You've been in this situation many times. Uh, you can act. What do you do? Um, are we back in our regular clothes and stuff? Sure. Does that mean vac suit and cutlass and stuff, or, or no? Uh, I don't think you can have... Can you have a cutlass here? If you can, yes. And yes, vac suit. I agree. I don't know if I can. Um, uh, I think it's the only, like, daggers, uh, and that's it. Like, no, no guns. Uh, but if you have a holdout pistol, uh, I'll say you can have your cutlass. No. All right. Um... Oof. Uh, yeah. Well, how far away are they from us? They're like right nearby, within like five, ten meters, and there's cover nearby. Oh. Um. And there's two of them. Uh, I think that there's probably six of them. Oh, six. Yeah. Of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, I thought we run. Yeah, let's run. All right. <laughs> Well then, uh, let's do the evasion rules. It's a loud shotgun. Let me turn that down. Oof. I'm scared. Okay, so it says that uh, because you do not have a surprise, you need to roll a, a 9 plus on 2d6. Uh, the dice modifier, you are at medium range, which gives you a plus one to the dice modifier. Um, 
And, and he, he, uh, let's have Shipley roll that. Okay, so just 2d6? Yeah, 2d6 to get a 9 and you add 1. Otherwise you'll be in a combat round. Oh, we are in a combat round. Alright, there is cover nearby, and they are also in okay. cover. You'll be able to attempt this again the, uh, the next round. Okay. Um... All right. Um, they are attacking, so they get to act first. Being in cover, I'm not even going to look at it unless they roll pretty high. Because you got armor and cover. Okay. If you want to attack, you can go ahead and do it. Um, but I don't think you have firearms. No, so we don't. You would have to like rush toward one of them, which you can do. You could actually rush no. up here and attack if you wanted to. Nope, nope. Alright, you're just gonna wait it out and try to get out of here? Yeah. Alright. I mean, Alright, this time, Bell, Bellamy, roll a 2d6 to get a 9, and you can add 1. Nice. You're able to flee down this this place. Maybe you kick one of them uh, as they try to close off your escape. They're all Varger. Freaking... Ah. hate these guys. That's what I meant when I said that somebody had made you all... <laughs> Yep. Yep. All right. So you uh, you make it back through, and you're able to use your comms to talk to everybody, and use your IDs to get it back on board the lady. Good lord. You got 175,000 well, credits. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, when we hear your report, <laughs> <laughs> there's no one I'd rather see dead. <laughs> 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 oh, looks like our mission is pretty straightforward then, isn't it? it makes the decision. Captain, would, would you kill him for free? I would bet my bottom dollar that the <laughs> cargo that Vampire Landlord has is the AI. I'd almost bet my left foot on it. He saved the flight case. That's got to be the same one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that makes it convenient as well. I guess that answers the question of what we're going to do with it. But we don't know where to find this guy now. No, you have, uh, like, coordinates that he gave you. Like, oh. he, he knows exactly where he is. Okay. So here you are at Squalia. And uh, I'm not going to go through all the procedures. Um, we need to kind of... We kind of need to hurry up and get there at this point. So um, you take off from Squalia. You head out to Bowman. Uh, initiate the jump. And uh, come out of jump, and you travel across the Bowman system, uh, Bowman Prime, um, and uh, you see all kinds of indications traveling through B Bowman of uh, minor uh, space skirmishes between hit and run ships of these uh, insurgents and uh, the Iterati Royal Navy. And um, there are wreck, there are uh, wreck sites and. Uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, distress signals and uh, evidence of combat uh, all over the, the Bowman system. Um, I assume that you uh, ignore all that. And there are also, there's evidence of people trying to make a profit off of it. Ships going around trying to scavenge from the battlefield. All the typical things. Now, you, uh, you start to approach this... Um, uh, start to approach this this asteroid. Um, and even as you approach, you can tell a few things. Uh, there is a signal. I don't know why it didn't show it. Let me try this. Um, there are some ships. Right on this thing. You think that you there's a signal for at least two ships. Both of them... In, one of them is... Um, 200 tons. Uh, another one is like 50 tons. <clears throat> 50 tons? Mm -hmm. A smaller <laughs> ship, yes. 
Like they're coming towards us? No, no. Uh, here's the asteroid where the or the, uh, the the little planetoid or rock where that uh, Imperial Navy Depot was. Uh, that you know, and then uh, there's a signal for two ships there. They are not moving. They seem to be docked. But you're getting a lot of signal traffic from there. It seems like there is uh, a fight going on 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 the rock. This is where Vampire Landleth is, right? Yep. Say we take out the ships while they're still docked, and uh, ask questions later. Uh, well, let's see. What, let's see what's going on. I mean, can we? Can we? Yeah, let's get on the sensors. Um, who's doing sensors now? Is it? It's uh, books. I'm. I think I'm piloting. I can't remember who's. Um, I have it over here. Whoever's. It's, Chipley. Yeah, because Perseus is, uh, or Chapman is doing the navigation now. I don't, who's who's okay. doing what? I think I am doing sensors. That sounds right. Okay. Uh, you can see this need is running anyway. All right. Yeah. So um, th this will be just a regular sensors check. Uh, essentially, I will give you very basic info either way, but if you get an eight on 2d6, uh, you'll get very specific information. Okay. No. Okay. So uh, one of them is a uh, a type A 200 ton free trader of some kind. The other one is a, um, let me make sure I have it correct, a pinnace. Um, it's a something bigger than a ship's boat and smaller than a free trader. I want to make sure. I'm pretty sure it's a, a pinnace. Ships. Okay, and they're in orbit around the asteroid? And they are on the asteroid and docked. Um, okay. And there's a bunch of signals. You get you gain the, the sense that there is a fight. Not between the ships, uh, which the pinnace doesn't have. Uh, it, it probably has a gun. The free trader may or may not. Uh, but they're not, the ships are not fighting each other. They're, like, docked. Uh, but there is fighting on the, the asteroid currently. Okay. Well, I'll relay this information to the crew. 40 tons. Yeah. Say we take out both ships before they get boarded and start firing at us. They could steal the ships. Alright. Uh, so, uh, approach to, to learn more or steal or destroy them now. Uh, books, which one? Uh, destroy them now. All right, Captain Bellamy. <clears throat> um, destroy. Very well. Uh, I believe Doc Ocean is the gunner. So, um, if you miss, uh, it's 2d6 to get an 8. Uh, twice. Uh, if you miss, uh, you can fire again uh, once you get closer, but it will alert them, obviously, before... You know, they might be able to start it up and start, you know, coming towards you. So here we go. Oof. Okay. So you missed the, which one are you targeting first? The two ton, 200 the two ton. ton. All right. So, uh, you fire, uh, and then a round goes by. Let's see here. Shit. Sorry. I rolled without asking. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. All right, you miss again. Uh, you are now on the asteroid. It's and and at this point, the uh, the pinnace peels off, and um, you enter ship combat. I've got good news and bad news about the ship combat. But uh, I think that the pinnace has weapons. Should have checked that too. Standard ship design, eighteen. Slope, Hennis has a uh, beam or pulse laser, has a pulse laser. All right. So, yeah. Um, the good news is that as the intruder, you can act first. Oh. You guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, I had a weird... Uh, all right, so uh, what, do you, what do you all do? It's clearly like 
coming about to try to, you know, fight you. Both of them have weapons or just the pinnace? The free trader is not actually coming off the asteroid. It's still docked there. The pinnace, like, just detaches from the asteroid, comes about, and uh, you can you can tell it's going to try to fight. Okay, I'll try to hit it one more time. You can do that. 2d6, here we go. Come on. Damn it. Oh, no. Okay, it's going to get a chance to trade a lick, man. Sorry, guys. It's uh, not looking good. Oh, well. Not your fault. Uh, now, I'm going <laughs> to zoom into the game sequence here so I don't have this. Intruder movement, intruder laser fire, native laser return fire, which it does not have, intruder ordnance launch, intruder computer reprogramming. You may now switch out your software if you choose to do so. You're going to keep what you got? We, we, yes. All right, native player turn. Yeah. Uh, they move, and they're going to uh, start to circle in front of you. Uh, their goal is to come straight for you and try to take you out. Native laser fire. They're going to attack you. They miss. Uh, intruder laser return fire, which I believe you have. We do not have return fire. Oh, my bad. I thought you had it. Okay, the rest of the stuff they don't do. We're back at the top. You can shoot again, or you can... And uh, Well, first of all, uh, actually, the first thing is movement. Where are you all going? So I think we should try to fire at them and then get behind the asteroid to try to block their guns from hitting us if we can. My wife needs help with my son. I'll be right back. I trust you all. Okay. Uh, I, f fire and get behind the asteroid? Go ahead, Books. Sorry, I was just going to say, yeah, I, I think I like that idea or the idea of kind of doing something to maneuver so that we could, you know, we could block return fire. Um, is that possible to be able to fire and then maneuver beyond an asteroid? Uh, no, but yes. <laughs> so you <laughs> you can move, uh, you can position yourself where to, by the next turn you can maneuver that way. And I believe that you can do that. Uh, but if you want to fire at them on this turn, you will have to not occlude yourself. I guess we don't really have a choice but to fire. I suppose there's yeah. two options. Uh, there's a few options. Uh, you could talk to them. You could um, you could get close to where you could occlude yourself and then fire. Uh, you could um, go ahead and occlude yourself and wait to fire later. Um, or you could... Yeah, I suppose those are three options. What do you think? Could we? What if we talk to them and trick them? into feeling safe and then we fire on them I think we should talk to them and maybe they're like some of the um, some of the guys that we met not too long ago that are part of the rebellion I, I should maybe. clarify actually that's not fair um, they are shooting at you so I think you're able to get a complete sensor reading on who they are uh, this is a, inter a Iterati Navy ship oh yeah bad guys let's shoot them yeah, yeah <laughs> there's no talking to them um. Yeah. Shipley, Is there what, any other? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Is are there any other uh, weapons we could use? No. Um. Okay. Yeah, you only we have... don't have. We don't have the fish still. Right. Yeah, we got rid of that. Yeah, I don't think the fish is going to do anything right now because you're like 125,000 <laughs> kilometers away. Except make I... people really curious, which I suppose is something. Uh, but we, yeah, I was thinking of something, but no. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> we don't have the fish, but I am curious. But we'll get back to that. Shipley, w of the three options, uh, talking, uh, running and waiting to shoot, uh, getting close to running and then and shooting. Which one? Which of those three? Or do you have a different um, idea? I like getting close to running and then shooting. All right. Let's do it. Um, so let's see here. Uh so this gets to like right here oh, you get really that? close and so by the next turn you could you could mask yourself behind this asteroid if you wanted to uh go ahead and fire doc ocean come on fingers crossed give me something come good. on doc oh. <sighs> oh. 
Okay. Hippocratic oath. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> they they try to they try to come uh, back to haunt you. Chase yeah. you, unfortunately, and uh, they uh, miss as well. All right. It's back to you all. We're, so are you gonna try to mask yourself behind this thing, or are you gonna wait again and like fly out this way and then fire? I don't think we have much of a choice but to keep firing, or we could run away, but just keep chasing after us. They probably have a jump drive that would follow us, right? Or well, they have a. The, the they're probably we're they're not they're not slower than us. <laughs> it's not possible. Okay, well, go ahead and roll. <laughs> okay, Let's do here it. we go. Oh, so close, man. All right, roll again. Roll like twice. Let's let's go ahead and do the once we get into one of these hairballs. <laughs> yeah, roll hairballs. I mean, uh, roll a third time, just so we can figure out when it's going to happen. If it's going to happen. Oh, hold on. Don't count this roll. I accidentally pressed the wrong button. Okay. How do I clear out? Uh, can I just backspace that. Uh, yeah, there we go. Fine. Yeah, I got oh, okay. it. Okay. Okay, 2d6. Okay, there we go. I'm having the worst luck. Oh, man. So maybe somebody else... <laughs> somebody else should seven, roll. Five. Seven. So close. <laughs> All right. Somebody else want to hop on the gun give it a try? Shipley. <laughs> okay. You're the gunner. Yeah. I I'm always down to shoot something. Shipley, you get it. All right, roll d6 for damage. <laughs> Finally, my god. Shipley just pushes me out of the way, and I, I still get out of there. It's doing the first shot. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, it's in character, though. It really is. That was perfect. Hit, or, no, it's a regular hit. Hit location. Fuel. <laughs> You can see their fuel, and actually, I think there's a, a rule. Uh, something happens when you hit certain areas. Um, uh, abandoned ship. Let's see. All right, now I know it's in here somewhere. Hit location. Damage definitions. Fuel. Each fuel hit punctures a fuel tank and releases 10 tons of fuel. If sufficient fuel hits have been inflicted to reduce the remaining fuel less than that required for a jump, the vessel may not make a jump. When all fuel is accounted for, the vessel may not use its maneuver drive or fire its lasers. Uh, this is a pinnace which has uh, one ton of fuel. So, and like the fuel sprays out into, into space and you just see it start to list. Just drifts off. All right, what do you do now? <clears throat> Take it to him. All right, who, who is... Shall we hail? Shall we try hailing? While you were gone, they determined that this was an Iterati naval vessel. Oh, Lord have mercy. Okay. Well, we're already criminals. All right, so what, 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 do, you all, what do you all think? I think we should shoot him. Yeah. Destroy Some it. more. Yeah. Destroy I agree. Him. Yeah. Absolutely. At this right. point. So who wants to? Okay. I, it's got to be Shipley. Go ahead and roll a d6 for damage. And we're gonna fire as much as it takes to to do this. So you fire. You got a one. Uh, on a one, it says. Uh, damage. Gosh, dang it. Oh wait, you have to roll two d6. So you got. Seven. You got their hole. Uh, you bent their hole, and people start flying out. Uh, oh boy! You can roll two d six again. It's gruesome. If you get a twelve, something happens, and then you just at this point you just chew off their hole, um, and they, it splits the ship in two and starts to split a, a, across. At this point, you're just like shooting dead dead men if you choose to. 
Actually, this is one of those do you shoot the person uh, that's jumping out of the plane kind of situation because they could be calling for help. And that's true. I mean, hang on, what about the other ship? Isn't, what, did we neutralize the other ship as well or no? Uh, it never moved. It's docked and hasn't moved. Okay, then yeah, I'm going to keep shooting. Okay. We're, 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 we're shooting at the the 200 ton, right? Yeah. No, the uh, 40 ton. No, no. That. I thought that one was taken care of because we, like, that one should run out of juice here in a minute. I thought the uh, 200 ton was the one we were. No, no, said I was. That, yeah. said that there were people that could call for help if we don't kill them. The oh. 40 ton. Vehicle. All right. At this point, you're. Doc, you, cover your eyes. <laughs> yeah, at this point, you vaporize that 40 ton vessel and it disappears from your readings. There's no way they could call for help. Now, you take out the 200 ton? I'd say we land, since it hasn't taken off yet. Maybe they're friendly. Mm. I see we can, we, <laughs> can we see the battle going on down on the asteroid? Yes. I mean, you can tell from radio and signals that there's an active battle, both in zero-G and within the facility. Are we able to note whose ship that is, who the 200-ton vessel is? Uh, only at this point. So you rolled for that before, so I'm going to say no. Uh, you would actually have to get really close to it. Like, yeah. Let's get close to it, find, find out who we're dealing with. Yeah. Definitely. All right, you'll be near the battle, but you can do it. Well, it's not a space battle, though. It's a ground battle. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, okay. Then in that case, uh, you do that. You First thing you do is you come in and do this approach in, in, to the asteroid because you have to come back around. You have this constant acceleration. Uh, so um, you, uh, you approach, and this place is uh, just an utter chaos uh and there's a uh, um chunks of the facility are like um floating off into space there's dead bodies floating around and there's a zero g battle going on at the main entrance to this facility uh meanwhile you all um bring the lady in and you like kind of come along side of this you know right and then to see where this ship is, you find you have to, uh, the pilot has to like circle around to the backside. The dark side of the asteroid has a, has a docking platform. Um, and it looks like it's closed off and sealed. It looks like it's meant to actually enclose the docking platform, but the actual like, um, paneling, uh, and the ceiling part of it is destroyed or gone or removed. Uh, but you can't land, uh, but you could zero G in, um, or you could come in the main entrance. Uh, but uh, as you come around, you can see... I think Bellamy would recognize this. This is a fast trader. It is a souped up... It's what you hope to eventually have your ship be. Uh, this is a, a, a free... Power trader? Fast trader. It's got a, a souped up power plant, thrust, and a jump drive. More so than, uh, than a regular A1 would. And... Um, that is where we will end the adventure for the night. All right. Ooh.